Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Almost good evening on the East Coast. It is 4.30 p.m. Eastern, which means it is 1.30 p.m. on the West Coast. And good day to you wherever you are tuned in watching this newest edition of the Isolation Series. I'm very excited to be back for a couple of different reasons. Number one, because as you can see, after five and a half months, I finally, finally got a haircut ladies and gentlemen yes that's right my head is back to normal and doesn't look like a piece of shit anymore what is up new york good to see you in the building hey everybody thanks for tuning in on today's episode of the isolation series i'm also very pleased to be joined by my very very good friend uh, actor from grim caprica and a myriad of other things including a wonderful arc across two seasons of Suits. The one and only Sasha Royce will be joining me in a moment or two. Dolph Ziggler is not here today. It is, in fact, Sasha Royce. So we are waiting for him to send a request. He is on here and will be sending a request in just a moment. And we will get started with the one and only Sasha Royce. He will be right here, ladies and gentlemen, and it will be a lot of fun just waiting on his request, and we will get this thing, as they say, literally and figuratively, in my case, rolling. There he is. Hey, buddy. There he is. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Um, this is my first uh, IG Live, I think. I don't think I've done I may have done one years ago. I don't recall. But uh, so this is new territory. Well, I'm glad I could help with that. <clears throat> you always do. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much also for taking the time to join the Isolation Series. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, I've done... Uh, a lot of these uh, since the pandemic itself started with a myriad of different people and I needed to bring it down a couple pegs. So, of course, I invited <laughs> you on. Good, today. good, good. <laughs> set, that, set that bar low, man. Set that bar low. Correct. Uh, uh, first and foremost, before we dive into the meat of the conversation, as it were, how is the vibe specifically in your neighborhood and where you are immediately because uh, obviously in the United States it's really interesting right now with the spikes and everything else. Yeah, interesting is a, a good word for it. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of moving backwards. So uh, it's, it's a little depressing. Uh, things are closing down. I think there's just a mandate now in West Hollywood to enforce uh, uh, under penalty of a fine, uh, you know, wearing masks. So it's sad that we've come to this state that we uh that we weren't able to collectively come together and just kind of you know nip this in the bud a little bit but um you know we'll get through it eventually it's sadly a little bit more difficult than we anticipated but we'll get through it yes um now uh, i want to jump into something that you and i are both very very familiar with and that is uh the entertainment business you and i have been mm. very fortunate enough to make a living and be part of the entertainment business for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my question to you is, how do you think this whole situation has uh, sort of changed the landscape of our business as we know it? Because you and I had this conversation the other day, and I think that it's going to be a long, long while still until we are able to get back on set with mm -hmm. with the crew and the fellow castmates the way that we knew it for so many so many years uh so well, what do you think our business is going to look like moving forward <laughs> uh it's 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 honestly it's just speculation at this point i i think everybody's hoping for the best but um <clears throat> i think we're all very apprehensive um I, I've spoken to different people at all levels of the industry, from executives to directors, producers, actors, and certainly my team. And everyone has very different opinions of it. Um, everyone is moving ahead and, and you know, trying to remain positive. But I think we, uh, we are all fully aware that uh, it's a very 
uh, difficult and very tenuous situation and that things could change on a dime. So I, I don't know. Personally, I'm a little skeptical as to how we're going to get through a production without major interruption, um, especially considering the state of things. But um, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe people will come up with some sort of system that'll be safe and we'll be able to continue all the way through to the end. But it's to be, it's left to, to, to sort of, to be seen, I guess. I think things are starting to slowly roll out as of maybe next month. And so uh, we'll see how the first few uh, productions fare. Do you have a message for people in general right now that are big fans of our productions, whatever our productions happen to be? Uh, now, mind you, I, I'm still questioning why some people enjoy your work as much as they do, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> you're lucky you're so charming. You're lucky you're so charming. Right, uh, right. No, no, I, uh, a message to who? To people in the industry? Uh, no, no, just like to, to the fans and stuff, because as much as it's difficult for us in the industry, it's infinitely hard for the fans too, because they expect their favorite show uh, to come back, you know, like it always does, and and, and yeah. things like that. And unfortunately, new content for the reasons that uh, you've already outlined will be very, very few and far between for the next several months, in my opinion, at least. And and only time will tell. But yeah. based, based on uh, intelligence or lack thereof in the United States right now, I don't see it coming back in a timely manner. There's very likely we'll have like um, <clears throat> um, certainly a, there'll be a lack of new production, you know, obviously. I mean, that's unavoidable. Um, there are people who are definitely trying to push the envelope. I mean, there's productions moving to Europe and Australia and New Zealand and places that have uh, been able to address the pandemic in a more effective way. But uh, there's going to be definitely a major slowdown, but the fans, I mean, I, listen, I, there's never been a better time <laughs> to sit through a pandemic, so to speak. I mean, you've got endless amount of streaming opportunities and channels. And I mean, the amount of um, content that we have to, to, to siphon through is, is endless uh, seemingly. It will come to an end at some point, but um, I think we have enough to keep ourselves entertained for the time being. So I think this is, you know, certainly not the time of, having to go out to a blockbuster and find a video to keep yourself occupied for two hours. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate right now. Was that a blockbuster video reference? Yes, it was. What, what is this? There's still, I think there's still one. I think there's still one blockbuster in, in the world and it's in Oregon in Bend, Oregon of all places, which a place I love by the way. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, now uh, I would be remiss if I also did not ask you throughout your career and everything like that, what would you say as seen by Sasha Roy's uh, perspective, are your top three acting moments throughout your career as of right now? Oh, oh, uh, well, I mean, grim, obviously, because it was just such a, uh, a wonderful, surprising success, and, and it was so longstanding that I got an opportunity to experience what it's like to work over the course of countless episodes and develop a character. Um, and that was a real gift and a wonderful opportunity and a great experience. Um, Suits was a fun one. That was a, a really fun for me because I tend to play so many uh, murderous villains. And so to actually play just like a heartbroken, lovesick kind of guy who's just, you know, just nice uh, was, was a wonderful change of pace. Caprica was a show I, I really, really enjoyed as well. I think it was a cutting edge character. And I think it was a very intelligent show with an incredible pedigree of a cast. And um, I was very proud of the work I did in that. And, and uh, I thought, um, yeah, that was that was an important uh, character at an important time. Um, I, so those are, I, those are a few of them. I will say that one of my favorites, without getting into the specific specifics of it, was the one comment that your mom made to you uh, <laughs> that I will never ever forget. Yeah. And, and and that to me is is my favorite being your yeah. friend uh, and and things like that. Well, just. Let's just say that your mom did not hold back on 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 thinking what she thought in that particular instance. 
Yeah, I mean, the short version is, you know, I'm from a Jewish background and uh, I was auditioning for, this is many years ago, auditioning for a role of a World War II Holocaust movie in which I was supposed to play one of the downtrodden, victimized Jews. And I kept, um, I had to speak some Yiddish, which my parents speak. So I went to them and asked them for some assistance. And after sort of performing it for them a few times, my mom just took a pause and said, yeah, I see you more as a Nazi. And so, <laughs> which is, my mom is a very honest person. Um, so, that, that, yeah, that's definitely a, a funny memory. Yes. Um, now, I know that you are new to the whole cameo scene as mm. well. And you recently um, joined Cameo. And because of that, uh, you were able to raise $10,000 for a mm -hmm. great, great cause of uh, giving out, I believe it was 2,000 meals a day or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, so why don't you talk <clears throat> a little bit about that for a sec? <clears throat> well, I was just looking for some way to assist and be of, uh, of, of, of some assistance, some help in, in this really difficult time. And, uh, you know, we're kind of trapped in our homes at this point. So um, I thought that perhaps the Cameo app, which allows fans and, and um, some of the performers and, and, you know, public figures that they follow to interact, you could send them videos and so on. That'd be a, a nice platform to raise some money for a charity that I feel very strongly about here in Los Angeles, which is called Project Angel Food. And um, they deliver meals to <clears throat> individuals in, in high risk. Um, so people who are very reliant on, uh, on these meals that are especially catered to all of them. And in a time like this, I mean, these individuals went from high risk to extreme risk and needed all the help they can get. And the, and the charity, unfortunately, um, was not able to do their yearly fundraisers. So they were kind of caught off guard as many charities were. So it was a, a chance to kind of give back to the community and, and also engage fans who I'm sure are equally bored and frustrated sitting at home. So I think it kind of worked out for everybody. Okay. Uh, now I get everybody out of here with the same question that I'm about to pose to you because you're no different than everybody else that I've had on here. And that is, do you have a Spence moment or a Spence memory that sticks out to you that you would like to share with the people because it's one thing for me to talk about our friendship. It's a whole other thing to get the other side's perspective when they come on here and things like that. So do you have a story that sticks out? I know most of them we can't really talk about, but... Uh, you mean uh, you and I? Yes. Oh, um, well, I recall when I was up... Uh, was it? I was still filming Suits, I think, at the time, wasn't I? Where we... Uh, when the um, NBA playoffs were taking place, where there was the Raptors were in the finals and the Toronto Raptors were in the finals. And, and we were desperately trying to find a place to watch the game. And you would think <laughs> it would be no problem considering, you know, Toronto is in, in the finals for the first time. And yet we found like obstacle after obstacle at every place we went to, primarily not being able to get in because we had, didn't have reservations or. No, no, no. Know. The the biggest, the biggest issue was my wheelchair. Your the, wheelchair was an issue in one place I, or maybe a couple of places. You're right. Yeah. 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 But we ended up, I know we ended up sitting at a couple of different places Neither of which was really spectacular, I think, or or really designed for viewing. Ladies and, and we... <laughs> gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to put it in perspective for you, Sasha and I posted up at a bar, literally a bar here in Toronto. After looking for three or four different places, we ended up sitting at the end of a bar in a local hotel here in Toronto, and they had one TV in the entire bar. With and, no sound, I think, right? No, there well, even... no, there was sound. Was but there, why, don't uh, you, why don't you describe to the people the horrible tone in color of the TV that we had to deal with at that I'm, time? I mean, I'm trying to think which hotel, because we ended up at two different hotels at one point. I, I think it was just such a clusterfuck. I mean, it was just, pardon my language, but it was, uh, but we got through it. But I, for some reason, my hotel room wouldn't even have the game, so we were just, I know, we were just running ragged all over town. Yeah, and but after, we got, but but Raptors won, which is great. Yes. And after the and after the Raptors game, we went back to your hotel, and there's a bar right at the bottom of your hotel that was there, and it was just us and the staff, and we were watching <laughs> the Trailblazers yeah. playoff game in the that West. Is, 
That was my other team, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, they were cleaning the, the bar as you and I were sitting there. The saddest yes. two people in Toronto that night. The saddest two men in all of Toronto. Correct. <laughs> um, but, but, I, but I will say, you know, um, you never once have made my wheelchair a thing. From day one, uh, we have clicked. I don't know why, because I'm way more attractive and charismatic. Well, that's why I'm riding your coattails. Yeah, quite literally, because I can't mm -hmm. walk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I, uh, I really uh, do appreciate you coming on. And more importantly, I appreciate your friendship. I mainly do it because of Bernie, let's be honest, because Bernie is the man. He, he sends his regards from the corner of the house over there. He's yes. fast asleep. You He's got no, no time for this. Wonderful. <laughs> Um, and uh, for those of you who are watching this and are on Sasha's um, feed, feel free to click on my name up in the corner and follow because I have different people uh, like Sasha come on, like I said. Um, and it's a fun, fun thing because we all have to keep ourselves entertained as possible and, and try and make a difference as much as we can. And you, despite my best efforts, are still one of my good, good friends. And I love you, buddy. <laughs> love you too, pal. And thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure, pal. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. That is the one and only Sasha Royce. And this has been another edition of the Isolation Series. Stay tuned tomorrow for another fantastic guest. Until then, thank you so much for joining us. And we will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>